Here's a name that we haven't spoken about in a very long time, Jussie Smollett. And there's a documentary talking about the anatomy of a hoax. As you know, recently, Jussie Smollett has been re-entered into the news because he's appealing this case that he lost. And technically, that was a year ago. He could have served his time and this nightmare could be behind him. But Jussie is Jussieing. Let's talk more about what is coming out in this new documentary about Jussie Smollett and the anatomy of his hoax. Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So it's been a long time, and I was actually ready to stop talking and reporting about Jesse Smollett. But as you know, after Jesse Smollett was convicted and put in jail for this hoax, where he claimed that two white men had attacked him, then it turned to black men and he had a noose around his neck. Can y'all believe this shit? Can y'all believe this shit? And then it came out that, did he create this story just so that he could get more screen time? And some sympathy? Well, you know, he served only a few days before being released while he was going to appeal this whole conviction. Well, it's been a year and he just appealed this conviction. He could have served his time. This would have been over with. All right. But you also may have heard that Fox Nation is coming out with a documentary called Anatomy of a Hoax. And it's all about Jesse Smollett and the brothers that were involved in this situation that testified against Jesse saying that we planned this with him. He came to us to plan this. Well, they're speaking out in this documentary and it's pretty interesting. So the New York Post writes this, Abimbola and Ola Osandero claim, claim the morning they were prepared to allegedly help actor Jesse Smollett stage a racist and homophobic attack against him in 2019. Four years ago, y'all. He didn't show up on time. They, were, they said this in the documentary, we made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. This is in Chicago. This is in the middle of the night. It is freezing. I went to Chicago in May and it was freezing. They said, we made sure we got there at 2 a.m. sharp. We had no phones because he did not want us to bring any phones, according to Abimbola. So 2 a.m., he was nowhere to be found. He was not there. So we were like, damn, what do we do? We didn't have no way of, of contacting him. He had no way of contacting us. So we waited here for about four minutes. Ola says, but it felt like forever. Because it was cold as a bee, I saw him out the corner of my eye, Abimbola recalled, and I was like, okay, that's him. The Osandero brothers returned to the posh Chicago block for the first time since the chilly January 9, 2019, mourning for a five-part docuseries, Jussie Smollett, Anatomy of a Hoax, streaming Monday on Fox Nation. So in their first exclusive interview since testifying in Smollett's trial in 2021, the brothers share, quote, exclusive details of their alleged roles in the made-for-TV drama that captured the international that captured international headlines for years. Their attorney, Gloria V. Rodriguez, is listed as an executive producer of the docuseries. So it's important to mention these specific details. They continue in this. They said, as we crossed the street, we said, hey, to, to get his attention, hey, N-word. He turned around, looked at us, and that's when we started yelling the famous slurs he wanted us to yell. Hey, aren't you that Empire F-word? The Unsendero brothers claimed to the camera crew in tow. We started tussling, moving around, and then I pulled him to the ground, Abimbola said of Smollett. He wanted it to look like he fought back. Remember what he said in his infamous interview with Robin Roberts? That was very important for him because he said, hey, don't just beat my ass. Make it look like I'm fighting back and whatnot. Smollett, who has long proclaimed his innocence, didn't participate in the project. Of course not. 
which arrives nearly two weeks after he filed an appeal challenging his 2021 disorderly conduct conviction and requesting a new trial. The Post says that they reached out to Smollett's attorney for comment, did not hear back. The Fox Nation special rehashes the rise and fall of the openly gay actor who has been starring in the hit Fox drama at the time, Empire, which followed the exploits of cutthroat music mogul and his talented family for four years at the time of the incident. Abimbola, one of the uh, Osandera brothers, says he alleges that Smollett didn't provide a specific motive, but wanted to be the, quote, poster boy for activism. The brothers claim Smollett walked them through the plants and accompanied them to the site beforehand. Abimbola said he remarked afterward, yo, this is Hollywood-ish, is crazy. And this dude, wow, I don't know what the hell he's on, but ish, we're a part of it now. Now it's time, you know, carry on and follow through with it. Smollett reported being assaulted while walking back to his high-rise apartment from a Subway restaurant. He said his attackers yelled slurs at him, declared Chicago is MAGA country, hit him, poured chemical substance on him, and hung a noose around his neck. A police continued to investigate. Smollett sat down with Good Morning America co-anchor Robin Roberts to share his version of the confrontation two weeks later. You also see the police cam footage of Smollett in his apartment, and he had not taken the noose off of his neck at the time, which a lot of people thought was a little strange. Smollett said, said without any doubt in, in his mind, the surveillance image the police released of two persons of interest in dark clothes were the so-called perpetrators. Eddie Johnson, who served as a Chicago's police superintendent from 2016 to 2019, admitted to the docu-series that the police actually had a, quote, better photo of the suspects than the grainy one that initially was shared, but feared inciting angst among Chicago's black and gay community. So now in full disclosure, I can say this, the reason why we wouldn't let them put it out was because it did have a, quote, red a red baseball cap, Johnson 62 explained of the photo. The red hat was allegedly worn to suggest ties to the Make America Great Again campaign theme. He says, I didn't want people to focus on that because it would cause more angst. So now that next day, when everybody finds out about it, do you think we would have some issues in the city? Yeah, we would have. That's interesting. It also makes me interested in... Is was that a responsible decision, not giving the full details to the public? Just saying. And is this going to help Jesse's appeal? That remains to be seen. So they continue. said, within days, the police determined that the men were the Usandero brothers, small-time actors who had worked as background players on Empire. Officers met with them at O'Hare International Airport when they returned from a trip to Nigeria. In the docuseries, the brothers say that they were 100% believable as white supremacist characters. But Abimbola recalled the uneasy feeling he experienced on the plane while replaying in his mind the information police had released to the media about the case. He says, two big ass police, officer, police officers came up. I went with them. I was like, damn, it's over with. They got me. Abimbola described of arriving at the Chicago airport. It was like a movie itself, Ola said. The brothers eventually decided to cooperate with the police, and Smollett was hit with 16 felony counts of disorderly conduct for making a false report. He was accused of orchestrating a phony hoax to boost his music and acting career as Empire waned in popularity. But in a shocking move, less than three weeks later, the charges were dropped by the Cook County State's Attorney, Kim Fox, after Smollett's performed community service and forfeited $10,000 bond to the city of Chicago. Johnson said in the docuseries that he was at he was at a police recruit and promotion ceremony with the then mayor Rahm Emanuel when he heard this surprising development. He was like, "Soup, how the f did this ish happen?" Johnson recalled of Emanuel's alleged response to the news. He says, "I know Fox and I don't have the best relationship, but you and her talk all the time." Did you know? And I said, I didn't have a clue. 
The Post reached out to reached out to a rep for Ron Emanuel, now the U.S. ambassador to Japan, for comment. So we're not going to rehash everything that happened in between. So that part of the story happens, and this is playing out in the documentary. As you know, fast forward in the summer of 2019, a judge appointed a special prosecutor to look into why the state attorney office abruptly dropped the case. Smollett was indicted on six counts of disorderly conduct in early 2020. The Elson Darabur brothers who testified during the trial in late 2021 used the Fox Nation special to continue to set the record straight about claims that they tried to extort Smollett for $1 million each to keep quiet and allegations of a rumored sexual relationship between Abimbola and Jesse Smollett. Smollett's defense team painted Ola as a homophobe and Abimbola as a disgruntled ex-lover, if you remember the case. So as you know, at the end of this trial where Jesse Smollett had this outburst in trial, the final determination of the case weeks later in December of 2021, a jury found Jesse Smollett guilty of five of the six disorderly conduct counts. He was sentenced in March of 2022 for 150 days in jail. This is a year ago, and he just filed his appeal. So let's briefly talk about this appeal. So this recently happened just a few days ago that Jesse Smollett is appealing this hate crime hoax uh, conviction. So they write this. The Empire alum 40 is seeking a new trial as he claims, quote, prosecutorial misconduct in, in this case was, quote, clear and egregious, according to the 102 page document filed Wednesday with the Illinois Appellate Court and obtained by the Post. In Wednesday's brief, Smollett's attorneys argued his, his protection against double jeopardy was violated. Prosecutors quietly said in 2019 they wouldn't pursue the 16 counts of disorderly conduct against him as he had forfeited $10,000 $10, bail bond to the city of Chicago and performed community service, as I mentioned before. Cook County's state attorney, Kim Fox, came under national scrutiny for her role in the handling of this case. As you know, a judge appointed a special prosecutor to review her office's decision and new charges were filed. So according to Smollett's attorney, they said Mr. Smollett negotiated bail bond forfeiture and performance of community service during his first prosecution constituted punishment and thus his second prosecution and punishment for the same offenses violated the double jeopardy clause protection against multiple punishments for the same offense. His attorney also claimed that there was, quote, prosecutorial misconduct, including allegations that a defense witness was pressured to change his statement. And they took issue with the, quote, biased decisions by the trial judge, saying his, quote, closing remarks demonstrated that Mr. Smollett's sentencing took on a personal retributive tone. Since then, Jesse Smollett has been working and busy on other projects, but this cloud of suspicion continues to haunt him and follow him. But I honestly believe if Jesse Smollett served his time and came out, I believe as a community, as in the world of entertainment, people would have moved on. Would they still have jokes? Would this still follow him in some shape or form? Yes. But do I think that he wouldn't be able to work again? I don't think so, especially if you are talented. And some of you might say, well, Kempire, then there's that. Come on. <laughs> but I feel as if the, the fact that he, and maybe, because I don't know what's going on with Jesse Smollett and why he continues this charade, but I do believe something psychological is going on. Look, I am no expert, but based off of his behavior and the fact that when they detail all of what went down to create this, and it was pretty sloppy when you think about it, it kind of makes you think something else bigger is happening with Jesse Smollett. But like I said, this could all have been behind him if he had just served his 150 days. And I don't even think that he would have served all 150 days. But now, here we are a year later, he's still dealing with this. His choice. And we got to report the news. Guys, I want to know your reaction to the Jesse Smollett appeal and this new docuseries. Will you be watching it? And will there be anything new that you would be surprised of that might come, come out from it? Let's continue this conversation in the comments section. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Thanks for watching. Ooh, you bring the
Follow me. 